Monday. Thank you for joining us. We are so glad you're here. Today is another episode of Algebraic Reasoning, Critical Thinking, and Number Sense. I love these puzzles. I hope you have been enjoying the last two episodes, and we hope this one will be equally as helpful to you and your students. So thanks again for your time. Are you ready? Let's get started. Algebraic Reasoning, Critical Thinking, and Number Sense, Episode 3, Weight Puzzles. Just like last week, these puzzles are fantastic puzzles to use with 7th and 8th grade students. It gives them a visual representation for something that they are learning to do abstractly. But even for younger students, Younger students are not yet applying these skills in an abstract form, but doing these puzzles helps them to really develop that algebraic reasoning and it just gives them a strong foundation. So I hope that you'll use these puzzles in a variety of situations. Once again, for these to be effective, students must apply strategies rather than using guess and check. So let's talk about how you can help students develop those strategies. And although I created this puzzle, I'll share some resources at the end and you can always create your own. Let's get started. We mentioned this before, but it is very important that students do not use guess and check. Students should be able to solve these puzzles by applying number sense and reasoning skills. All puzzles can be solved without guessing. Notice the directions for this puzzle. It says each shape has a unique consistent weight. So if they've been exposed to the previous puzzles, they understand unique and consistent. What it doesn't say is that they're positive numbers, but it does say they're a weight, so they are going to be positive. It also does not say these are whole numbers because sometimes they're not. You can determine whether or not you want them to be whole numbers based on the level and mathematical knowledge of your students. You may not use guess and check. Be prepared to explain your reasoning. That is very important. Students should not only be able to give you the answer, but should be able to explain how they got the answer and should know what is important when they are solving the puzzle begin by asking students what they know about the numbers and the values. What they tell you will, will probably be pretty revealing. Some students may start to make up some numbers. So for example, they might say stars are five each and the circle is five. Well, that doesn't work because they're not consistent. So then they might say, oh, well, the stars are two each and the circle is 11. Well, that shows you they understand how the puzzle works, but they can't guess. They can't have a guess and check. Now, someone might observe that the circle has to be an odd number, and that would be um, a really good observation if they're whole numbers. So you just have to think about that. So give them counter examples. Um, if so, if someone asks a question that won't work, one suggestion would be to say, hmm, that's interesting. Well, could the star be one and one fourth? And let them think about that. So eventually you want students to recognize that what they need, and you can say, what do you need? Well, what I need is just one type of object and a number because then I can figure it out. Otherwise, I'll be guessing. Once students get to that point, that's fa fabulous because that's isolating the variable, right? Except it's in pictures. So then you have to go about logically thinking about how to do that. Students might recognize that this is also here. So, hmm, okay, well that would be 27. So now I know that value is 27. Well, that is so far so good. What else can you do? Do you see another group of this? No. And I see this. 
But if I take that and say it's 15, I still have two triangles and a square. Hmm. So that doesn't really help. But let students explore because as they start to explore this, they will start to recognize, okay, I'm on the right track. I just haven't found the right combination. And so logically, you can talk to them about what they might want to try next. Well, if this did not really work, you could start with this, except I tried that and that didn't really work. So maybe I should start with this. Do I see that? I do. So here is a star, a circle, and a triangle. And I know that is 11 grams. And I also see another star, circle, and triangle. And I know that is 11 grams. Okay, so what can students do at that point? Stop and let them think about what they should do next. You might think that it's fairly obvious, but really it's not going to be obvious for all students. They need to see that this is 22 and that they can take that 22 from 61. For some students, you might need to write it as an equation. Three squares plus 22 equals 61. Now, in middle school, students will see this as a two-step equation, but in elementary school, they may see it more like, a, more like a fact family. So some number plus 22 is equal to 61. Well, what is that number? So with a little math, they'll determine that the three squares have a value of 39. And so one square has to have a value of 13 because they are consistent. That's really the challenging part of the puzzle. Once they have found the weight of the square, the rest of the puzzle becomes fairly simple. It, now, this scale still doesn't really help them, but if they know the value of the squares or each square is 13, then they can substitute there. And now they can say, okay, well, 13 plus 13 plus the circle is 27. They can fairly easily determine that the circle is one. And once again, what would be your next step? Some students, most students will see it pretty easily, but some will not. It really doesn't help you here because you still have lots of combinations. But if you look at this puzzle, two stars together have a weight of 14 grams and they're consistent. So each one would have to be seven. Now I'm going much more quickly than you would go with your students, but you get the idea. And once this is seven, then it's pretty easy to determine that the triangle is three. So once again, the most challenging part of this puzzle is the beginning. You've got substitution and you have elimination with numbers because students have to recognize that they subtract the same amount from both sides of the equation or from the top of the scale and the total. I hope you love these puzzles and want more of them for you and your students. I originally saw these puzzles in Weight Logic by Marcy Cook. That was years ago, and I used those puzzles with elementary school students for a long time. When I went to middle school, I wanted more puzzles, so I began to write them, and you can do that too. Two of the puzzles that are similar to this are included in Building Problem Solving Strategies Level E. If you are interested in receiving free resources as we develop them, we are currently developing materials 
and we send those only to our email group. So if you're interested, join our email group and you'll receive more information. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And once again, we know your time is valuable. We appreciate your time and we value your opinion. So much so that we are giving away free prizes. So if you are trying these puzzles, we want to hear from you. Use one of the ideas below to enter and you could win a free prize just for taking the time to share your thoughts with us. And don't forget, be sure to hit like and subscribe. We don't want you to miss a single episode of Mind Bending Monday. Thanks again. We look forward to seeing you next week.